Well, here's the video that everybody's been waiting for, final assembly. Do you remember my earlier video where I showed how to put shaft savers on? Well, forget about that. When I inspected my new seals, I discovered that they rode on the shaft much lower than the little groove or the worn area in my shaft, making the shaft savers unnecessary. So I ended up stripping the shaft savers off and using the stock size seal again. To put the bearing plates on without damaging the seals, you need some type of seal protector to be like a lead-in for the seal as it comes down over the shaft. I ended up making mine out of some PVC pipe. I really like PVC for a couple of reasons. First, it's cheap. Second, it machines easily. Third, it's kind of slippery so that the seal really won't get, uh, get damaged passing over it. And fourth, it's cheap. I ended up gluing a piece of 3 quarter inch PVC together into a 3 quarter inch coupler, taking it over to the lathe, turning it to the right outside diameter, boring it to the right inside diameter, and then cutting it off. Before I actually started putting things back together, I also needed a bearing driver that had a pilot hole that would clear the shaft of the rotors. I ended up taking a piece of aluminum bar stock, also took that over to the lathe, turned it, drilled the one inch hole through the middle of it, and finished off by turning a pilot button on the end of it so I'd have something to hammer against. I always use a shot filled hammer when I'm driving against an aluminum driver. It creates a lot less bounce and it just makes it easier to drive bearings in, in a controlled fashion. Before putting the rotors into the case, I took them over to the lathe, chucked them up between centers, and then took some 1500 grit wet or dry sandpaper and polished the seal surfaces with some WD-40 for lubricant. Next came pressing the bearings back out of the bearing plates. Early on in the project, I ended up making a bearing catcher out of some plastic that I had lying around. And then for the bearing pusher, I just used a piece of steel bar stock that pilots off the inner race of the bearing. This lets me push the bearings out easily on the arbor press without damaging anything, especially the bearing plate. I didn't want to scuff and scratch the bearing plate by having it riding on a piece of steel while I was trying to remove the bearings. And I knew that I'd have to take the bearings in and out several times, so I figured it was definitely worthwhile to make up a good little fixture to be able to get the bearings in and out as needed without wrecking things. Before pressing the seals into the bearing plates, I coated the outside edge with a thin coating of RTV silicone. The RTV is slippery, so it helps the seals pass into the plate easier. 
and it also helps seal up any really micro leaks or micro scratches that might cause some seeping in the future. I pressed the seals in with a piece of nylon bar that I turned down on the lathe, leaving a shoulder about five thousandths of an inch tall on it. The Detroit Diesel Manual says that the seals should be recessed below the surface of the bearing plate between two thousandths and eight thousandths of an inch, so I went about halfway between and made my seal pusher with a five thousandths lip on it. Just to make certain that my seal driver worked correctly, I took my depth micrometer and I checked the depth of the seals into the bearing plate after I had them pressed in. I did end up with a dimension of about four or five thousandths deep into the plate, so the seal installer did its job properly. Final assembly starts with my old bearing plate which works as a nice makeshift stand on top of my piece of spacer wood. I set the case on top of the bearing plate and then put the rotors into the case making sure that the left rotor is on the left side and the right rotor is on the right side. I went over proper rotor orientation in an earlier video. In short, when you're looking at the rotors installed in the case, the helix of the rotor starts at the center of the case in front and then spirals away towards the back corner of the case, towards the outside corner of the case, when the rotors are installed on the correct side. The rotors are clocked in the case so that the index and the rotor shafts are facing straight towards what would be the driver's side of the car. If you're looking at the rotors from the very front, this means that the missing spline and the rotors both point in the 3 o'clock position. You can see the proper orientation of the rotors in this photograph with the red arrows showing the missing spline that's supposed to be pointing in the 3 o'clock position. The bearing plates install on the case metal on metal with no gasket. Permatex 3H Forma gasket is a good sealant to use between the bearing plates and the case. Next, I put my PVC seal protectors on the ends of the rotor shafts. As I set the bearing plate in place, these worked as a really nice pilot to keep the seal from catching on the edge of the seal area as the bearing plate went down onto the case. I used some temporary short bolts to hold the bearing plate in place. I wasn't going to be putting the front cover on right away and I knew that I would need a couple of test fits of the blower gears to set rotor timing so I ended up using these temporary bolts to make sure that everything was tight so I could get an accurate check of clearances one last time. Next step was to take my bearing driver, using it to drive the bearings all the way into the bearing plate until it bottomed out against the shoulder inside the bearing plate. I put a light coating of wheel bearing grease inside the bearing plate just to help keep the bearing from galling the plate while I was driving it in. <laughs> 
Next up was the bearing retainers held in place each by three quarter twenty screws. After that I reinstalled my gear spacers so that I could pull the rotors up tight to the bearings because before I put the gears on I was going to check all the clearances one last time to make sure that no errors crept in while I was doing my dowel pins or during any of the final assembly. Anytime I had to tighten bolts on the ends of the rotors, I would take the plastic handle of my hammer and wedge it between the rotors and the case to keep from marring the rotors or the case. The procedure for installing the seals and bearings is repeated for the rear bearing plate. The PVC seal protectors are pushed over the ends of the rotor shafts and then the rear plate is dropped in place over the seal protectors. Once the bearing plate was in place, I hand threaded the screws into the back of the plate and then I torqued all the screws in a center out circular pattern to 250 inch pounds. If you've ever torqued down an intake manifold or a cylinder head, you use a similar pattern to torque a large plate like this. Start at the middle and then spiral outward, usually going in three steps so that you don't warp the plate as you're torquing it down. After that, the aluminum bearing driver is used to drive the bearings in place until they touch the ends of the pilots on the rotor shaft. They aren't going to bottom out in the rear bearing plate. The recess in the rear bearing plate is deeper than the width of the bearing, so the first thing that's going to hit is actually going to be the bearing shoulder on the end of the stub shaft on the rotor. Before proceeding with setting rotor timing, I wanted to check all the clearances one more time. I took my long 14 thousandths feeler gauge and checked the side clearance of all the rotors in all four corners. Then I flipped the case over, took my 6 thousandths feeler gauge and checked the bottom clearance again in all four corners on all the rotor lobes to make sure that nothing had moved since my last assembly. Next I remove my gear spacers, then before putting the gears back on I made sure that on the passenger side rotor I reinstalled the 10 thousandths thick shim that was originally there when this blower was assembled on a diesel engine. Even though I'm not going to keep this shim I still wanted to make sure that I had a good starting point for checking my rotor timing. I set the gears on one at a time, keeping them in tandem right next to each other so that they wouldn't bind up on the rotor shafts as I pushed them on. <laughs> 
I actually use the screws from my gear pullers as my installers for the gears. I threaded the two hex screws deep into the rotor shafts and then installed nuts over the screws with three washers to spread the load out over the end of the gear. Alternating from side to side, I used a three quarter inch wrench to tighten the nut down over the gears to push them all the way down in place. Once the gears were seated all the way, it was time to do my initial check of rotor timing. In this partially disassembled view of the blower, I've oriented the rotors in about the right position to show how you check the rotor timing up the middle of the blower case. The long feeler gauge has to go down into the blower case between the two rotors, and the rotors have to actually be turned backwards against each other to be able to feel the tension of the feeler gauge between the rotors. During my initial assembly, it turned out that I had ten thousandths of clearance between the rotors. I wanted to tighten the rotor to rotor clearance up just a little bit. My intention was to machine the back side of the driver side gear to take the ten thousandths off to compensate for the shim on the passenger side which I was going to be removing. Also I took an additional six thousandths off of that gear to be able to tighten up my rotor clearance from ten thousandths to about eight thousandths. When you're machining the backs of the drive gears in order to change rotor clearance there's a ratio of three to one. If you take three thousandths off of the drive gear, you end up tightening rotor clearance by about one thousandth of an inch. After pressing the gears back onto the rotor shafts, I rechecked clearance. I came out with eight thousandths of clearance between the two rotors. That's the dimension that I wanted, so I'm going to leave it assembled just like it is. The last two checks are really just double checks of the rotor end clearance. I took my long feeler gauge and I checked between the rotors and the rear plate and I ended up with about 13 thousandths, just a hair tighter than I was originally. And checking between the front plate and the front of the rotors, I was still at 8 thousandths so my clearances are fine there. No need to take it apart and change any of that. I used the original gear bolts and washers to retain the gears for now. When I decide what I'm going to do for a drive kit, I'll buy brand new bolts and proper washers for this, but for right now I'm just going to assemble the blower, put it back on the shelf, and get back to the drive at a later time. The rear covers are sealed up with a thin coating of orange RTV sealant. I put the sealant in a small bead along the shoulder of the bearing plate, and then the rear cap can sit on top of that. When I tighten the covers down, I just use finger pressure to spread out the RTV. I didn't want to squish all the RTV out of from underneath the cap. The method here is going to be really similar to if you've ever used RTV for end seals on an intake manifold. Get the RTV in place, set the intake manifold in place and leave it sit for a while, then finish tightening it down after the RTV has hardened most of the way. The last step is really just a temporary installation of my front cover. <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure that I'm going to use the stock front cover, but I may end up going with a much fancier drive at some point in the future. For right now, I really just want to seal the blower up for storage. After putting the front cover on, I took all the remaining openings and I covered them very thoroughly with clear packaging tape. Again, this blower is going to go into storage before I get to the next phase of my project, so I just wanted to make sure that no debris can get inside this while it's on the shelf. I'll probably also put this in a large plastic bag to protect it. I topped off the assembly with my homemade magnesium carburetor adapter. I'll be posting another video after this showing the fabrication of that adapter. That's another project in and of itself. I did the design in Fusion 360 and then machined it out on my CNC bridge port. And here is a 360 degree view of the completed large bore 671 blower.